Welcome back to Drum Electric. So this is the second video of a three video mini series. That's what I'm going to call it. A three episode mini series looking at building an Ableton backing track rig from complete scratch. So if you haven't seen already, the first video is looking at all of the drivers that I'm going to install, which websites I go to to install them and then installing them. So that goes from the MIDI drivers for the SPDSX, the Focusrite drivers for the 18i20 that I'm using, and then Ableton, and I'll show you all of where that is. So all of that is in the first video. In this video, we'll now be digging into the backing track. So putting the click track with the backing tracks, setting up little markers in Ableton, and then finding the samples that suits the song. In the next episode, I'll actually be looking at MIDI outputting the SPDSX to Ableton so we can control it from the SPDSX, importing the samples that we use in this episode into the SPDSX. Have I said SPDSX enough? Uh... And then sorting out all of the outputs on the Focusrite to have a fully working rig. So let's get into it. Let's build this backing track rig. So. I do this in a really roundabout way. It's just my workflow and has been for years and you can definitely do this in probably a more productive way, but here we are, this is just how it works. So when I build backing tracks to go into Ableton, I actually build them through Logic and then I export them and put them into Ableton. You can absolutely do this all in Ableton. It's just how I've done it for years, so there we go. So I'll be using Logic for this. For the Windows users out there, don't worry, the process is exactly the same on any software. You can use Cubase, you can use Pro Tools, you can use Audacity, all of that sort of stuff. The process is exactly the same, I'm just doing it on Logic. So I've got all of the stems from Epidemic Sound. You'll be using your own stems for this, hopefully, or a real life stems. And I normally use real stems from real artists. I just want to avoid all the copyright, really. That's, that's kind of about it. So I'm going to open up a blank logic project and we're going to start building this track so we have click and all of the the stems that we need so i'm just going to create an audio track lovely and then i'm going to just drag in all of the individual instruments cool in this case i've only got four and that's one of the things i don't really like about epidemic sound where it's you get four stems rather than each individual instrument but hopefully you'll have a little bit more control the process is the same though so for this one i've got bass at the top drums in the middle and then instruments so everything else there and then they also give you a full mix so i don't need that one so i can just delete that completely here's what it sounds like That'll do. We don't need to listen to the whole song. You'll start to hear it as we do these this little series, but you get the idea. It's sort of a generic, you'd kind of hear it on the radio pop song, and that's because it has all of the different samples that we'll be using. So in this case, it's got a really simple uh, like 808 bass drum, a clap sound, and then a really tight like piccolo snare sort of sound. And then in the chorus, we can actually go to an acoustic kit and give it that live feel. So it's a really simple thing. It's only three samples but that's good because it's a nice simple basis to go off of but we'll get to that when we build the samples later in this video so the first thing we want to do is put a click to this and that's easier than you think which is good and there's a couple of ways that you can do this where i've downloaded this track it comes with the bpm so i know that this is 84 bpm if you don't know the bpm you can either get a phone with a metronome app on it i've got an iphone and i just use metro timer looks like that it's nothing fancy. I'm pretty sure it's a free app and it's just got a tap tempo on there. As long as it has a tap tempo, you're completely fine. So you can hit play, tap along and you can find out the tempo. Or, and this is one that I much prefer to use, you can go to a website like songbpm.com. You can just type in the artist and the name of the song and it'll appear. Obviously that only works with your big produced songs. So if you can hear it on the radio, if you see it on Spotify, it's pretty common that it's on that website. If you're doing original stuff, hopefully you'll know what BPM you recorded the song in. So there's a couple of different ways that I find the tempo. So I'm now gonna change the tempo to 84 BPM because I know what that is. I'm gonna select all of the stems and I'm just gonna move it to bar three. And I'll tell you why in a second. So I'm just gonna zoom that in. I'm gonna find an instrument that starts on beat one. Bass starts on beat one at the top. I should, there we go. Yeah, it does. 
So I'm going to put the playhead on beat three. I'm just going to drag it and get as close as I can to beat one. The good thing about pop songs is that they're generally quantized to beat one. So you can pretty much get it as exactly as you can using the drums there at the bottom as well. So I can get it to the beginning of that little waveform and that should then end out to be on time because they've quantized the whole song to be exactly on the grid. So I'm just gonna hit here, I'm gonna hit the K button to activate the click or I'm just gonna click on the top right up here. I'm gonna hit play and see what happens. I'm, I'm quite proud of that. Usually that takes a couple of tries, so hey! Okay, so that, that was good. I kind of nailed it on the first try, which is good. Uh, the ultimate test though is skipping ahead to like the middle of the song and then the end of the song to make sure that that stays in time the whole time. There's a 2-4 bar in there somewhere. That basically means this is prog. Look at us, we've gone outside of 4-4. Four -four. <laughs> so it's ever so you can hear it's flaming slightly it's ever so slightly off so i'm just going to zoom into the end here cool just gonna drag it back a little bit cool i think it's the other direction it's close enough it's close enough so now that we've sort of mapped the Logic Click or whichever software you're using now that we've mapped the click to it We've left these couple of bars at the beginning so we can give ourselves a little bit of an introduction click So I'm gonna create a new software instrument track I'm gonna name it click I'm then gonna go to the top left and click on the library button and then I'm gonna go into orchestral and percussion and then to orchestral kit and that's just because it has a really nice clave sound that I like to use in Logic, when you load it, and be careful of this if you're loading any MIDI instruments, it comes on with a bunch of like delays and reverb and stuff. I'm gonna take all of that off because we don't need that. So I'm gonna take the pencil tool, which is gonna write in one bar, and then I like to use these woodblock sounds. It's just a nice sound. It sticks out from usually, well, every mix that I've ever used a backing track with, it sticks out enough that I can hear it over the track, and it's not aggressive in the ear. So I'm just gonna create beat one, on the top note, move the velocity to full so it's as loud as it can be. I like to mark beat one with a higher note. So when you're playing live, you can hear where beat one is. And then the rest of the bar with a low note. So let's hear that. Great. Now what we need, because 84 BPM is rather slow, and it's gonna feel even slower when you're on stage and the adrenaline's going and stuff like that. I like to put in like the eighth notes or the individual subdivisions, depending on how fast or slow it is, because that just gives me a little bit of reassurance when I'm on stage and I'm going, this is so slow. So to do that, I'm just gonna find a shaker sound. There it is. And I'm just gonna put that on the eighth note. I'm gonna move it down to about 81 velocity in this case. So it's a little bit softer. Mark it on every eighth note, and our click turns to this. So it's a lot easier to feel that. You also have a nice shaker on the offbeat, so it just feels a bit more musical. So with that, we can come out of the, the MIDI control. On Logic, if you hover over the end of the thing, uh, it comes up with an open bracket and a loop. So that just means we can now loop that all the way to the end of our song, rather than just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Now the final thing we need to do is give ourselves a bar of time so we can click in the band. And that's why we've left two bars at the beginning of the track rather than one. So I'm just gonna create another bar. All I'm gonna do is create a half time bar, essentially. So on beats one and three, and then I'm gonna put a shaker on two and four. Again, just filling in that time. So when we are on stage and we've got the adrenaline, it's not as terrifying. And that gives us this. Three, four. Again, normal thing. Check halfway through that the click matches. We've, we've got that two, four bar in there somewhere, but I'm, I'm just gonna keep the click as it is. Normally I would go in and find that two, four bar. And if you've got anything like that in yours, definitely mark that in. But as we're just using this for a demo purpose, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it as is for now.
Cool. And now the final thing is to mute the drums. Great. And we have our backing track to a click, which is really nice. So with this, when you're building the backing track, if you're working with musical directors or someone that's in charge of how the band will sound on stage, then they'll decipher what's to be muted and what's not. In this case, and most of the time that I make backing tracks, I'm the one that decides that. So I'll go, which instruments do we have on stage? And the ones that are there, I will mute. So that'll then be up to you to do that for your track and just make it your own. So the next and final step before we put this into Ableton is now just to export it. So in Logic, the, you can do this a couple of ways, but the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna put the loop around the whole track because that basically means that every single track that I export is gonna start in the same place and end in exactly the same place. And it just makes it easier. So when I go into Ableton, I can literally just drag and drop, they'll all line up and it's great. So then I'm gonna solo the click. I'm gonna hit the bounce button here on the stereo out, or you can go file, export, that direction. Export it as a WAV or a WAVE, 24 bit and 44.1. You can do it in 44.8 if you want to, 24-bit, 44.1, that tends to be the go-to from what I found personally. And then hit OK and export all of them so you have individual stems. So, welcome to Ableton. If you've never used it before, this is what's called the session view. As you can see on the left, all of the tracks are in lines as if they're on a mixer. What we're going to use on the top right here, if you click that button, that takes us to arrangement view. You can also hit the tab key and switch back and forth. If you ever need any help with any of this stuff, as you're moving the mouse around, if you look in the bottom left, it tells you what that is. So for all of these tracks, I don't need MIDI track in, in this video. So I'm gonna delete those. There's two audio tracks. At the bottom here, there's a reverb and a delay. I don't need those. And there we go, that's our project set up. So the next thing is to import all of the audio. And there we go. So I've got click, I've got bass, I've got instruments, and I haven't got drums because we are the drummers. So that was a really simple drag and drop. It's renamed the tracks on the right, which is really nice. And that's why I always name my stems exactly what they're gonna be, because it just saves you a little bit of time there. So I'm just gonna hit play, make sure it all works. I found the two before bar, it's right there. Anyway, that all works. Again, I'm just gonna skip it to the end to make sure the click does line up. Great. So the next thing we want to do is line up Ableton's BPM with our tracks BPM, like we did in Logic. Now the reason for this is because we're gonna put in markers so we can control whereabouts we are in the song should something happen. So for example, if the musical director was like, let's loop around another chorus, we can just hop it back to the chorus and it will carry on playing. You can do this up here with the little tempo mark at the top left, but how I'm gonna do it is I'm going to automate the tempo so when we're using multiple different tracks in one project, the tempo will move according to the tempo of the track. So to do this, I'm just going to expand the master by clicking on this little arrow. And then up here, you have automation mode. So I'm just gonna click that, everything will change. I'm gonna check here, so it's mixer for the top one, and then underneath that is song tempo. For here, I'm just gonna change the tempo at the top to 84. Just double click that and it'll change. And then I'm gonna mark that in here, and then I'm gonna zoom in to the end of the track, and I'm gonna put another little dollop in there. And that basically means that if I skip ahead two bars and the next song is, let's go, the 108 BPM, we can then shift that, and by the time it gets to bar 63, the end of the track, it'll then move to the next tempo. So you'll do this for every song tempo that you have in your project. In this demo, we've only got one song, so I'm just gonna keep that as is. Once you're done with that, I'm just gonna click on the automation mode again, everything goes back to normal, and it's a wonderful time. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna check that everything's in the right place. I'm gonna move the playhead back to the beginning, and to do that, you can double tap the stop button. I'm gonna turn on Ableton's click at the top here, as you can see as it's highlighted. I'm gonna hit play and make sure it all lines up. Lovely. Great, and I'm just gonna check that once we get to the end,
There we go. Sped up to 108 because that's where we set it. So that's all working and that's great because now we can mark up our project. So to do that, I'm just gonna hit the set button on the right here. That's gonna give me a little flag. I'm gonna go Command R. I think it's Control R in Windows to rename it. And then I'm just gonna go intro. And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna do this for the whole song. I don't really know the official structure of this song. So base this off of what you think it is. I'm gonna go verse one. And I'm gonna do this for the whole track. So the whole track's marked up. So I'm gonna do this now. The beautiful thing of movie magic is what I'm calling it, is you're now gonna see the finished product. And there we go. So I've just recolored them a little bit just to make it a little bit visually more appealing. And I'll tend to color coordinate them all depending on which instrument is where. So this now means that if I click on the intro and hit play, it's gonna start there. I can skip ahead to the first verse. If something goes wrong, so for example, the vocals are supposed to come in here, but they don't, you can then skip back to the beginning. And verse one. You can skip ahead to the chorus. Post-chorus. There we go. And I've done that for the whole song and I'll do that for every song to mark it up. Because then what we'll do in the next video is we'll put those little arrow keys to skip forward and back and we'll put that on the SPDSX. So we can just hit the SPD and then it'll move back and forth. Same with the play and stop button, but we'll get into all of that in the next video. So that's our backing track. We could now technically go onto stage, hit play and that'll be fine. But we wanna do more than that. Our next job is to get all of the samples in place and make sure that matches with the song. So let's do that now. For the drum part, I know that the samples pretty much start in the verse, right at the beginning. I'm pretty sure it's an 808 bass drum and a clap. Cool. So there's a couple of shaky bits, a couple of uh, parts that are put on delays and things like that. I'm not gonna worry about that too much in this video, but if you want to go into that detail and recreate those reverbs and delays, please do. The good thing, if you're using the SPDSX, they've got a bunch of built-in samples, so you can just find the bass drum, which is I think from samples one to 10 or something near there, and you can just find which ones you want. If you want some more samples, the ones that I'll be using for this video and are some of my favorite are actually from the Elisis Sample and Loop Library. I know, I'm so sorry, but they are really good. And they are free to download similarly to the SPDSX samples. So if you ever lose them, you can just Google them and download them. So the Elisa Sample and Loop Library just gives me basically double the amount of samples. So I have loads to experiment with. So I'm just gonna use the drums and percussion samples. Uh, I'm gonna go to kicks, and my personal favorite is the 1984 kick. After a couple of years of using all of this, I'm getting familiar with which samples are which. But this is what it sounds like. There we go, nice and easy, sounds like a kick. So I'm gonna use the 1984 kick for that because that's a quite a good sound. I can mess with EQs and things, so I can import that into Logic, mess with it a bit. I won't in this video, but feel free to absolutely do that. The other thing was a clap. So I'm just gonna reference the clap sound. It's quite a dead just clap, isn't it? So uh, let's try the 1984 clap, see if they match. Quite reverby. 1980s clap is good. I just really like, just really like the sound of it. It's a little bit in the higher frequency range, so it will cut through a bit more. It's got a nice amount of reverb on it that's just manageable. So 1980 clap one, and then the 1984 kick is what I'm gonna use. And then I think the last sample is this snare drum. So the good news is that there's actually a snare sample right in there that's really clean that we can just take directly from. So I'm just gonna loop that sound. That didn't have the intended purpose I wanted it to. Uh, Nice and clean, and we can just sample that. So in Logic, I'm just gonna take this loop marker and I'm just gonna loop it and just make it as big as that sample. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bounce it. I'm gonna make it a 16-bit 44.1 WAV because that's what the SPDSX likes in terms of a format. And then I'm just gonna export that. And we've taken a sample from our actual song. So once that's exported, I think that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna go to the chorus. <laughs> There's this really nice reverb click. I'm not gonna put that in. I'm actually gonna keep this part of the track 
in the original because I'm going to play Kit on that bit just to bring that live element to it. But if you then wanted to go into that detail, grab those snap sounds and put them in, absolutely feel free. Okay, so that's the backing track that's now got a click. It's been put into Ableton. The tempo has been mapped in Ableton and we've put the little flags, the markers, all the way across so we have full control. We've also then got samples for the SPDSX that we're going to import in the next video. So by the end of the next video, you'll have a full backing track rig that you can control with just the SPDSX. You don't have to touch the laptop. You'll be able to fire off samples from the SPDSX and then you'll be able to route all the audio out of the back of the Focusrite 8920 to all of the different places. So the click can go on one channel, you can have a stereo backing track, and then you can have a spare one for the SPDSX. And all of that will come out of the DI box that I mentioned in the last video, and that will be a full rig. So as always, please like and subscribe for our shiny new videos, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>